of the teeming streets. Let's talk to them. Let's see what wild impulses drive them on. You, Hannah Haynes, you hate the slums. You want out. But even greater is your passion for pretty things. Where'd you get that dress? And that hat? Sam Burns gave it to me. And what'd you give Sam Burns? And you, Georgia, daughter of a burlesque stripper. What do you want? Applause, adulation, money? The stuff that makes the world go round. I love it. And you, Vera, what will you pay in decency and self-respect for the kisses and love you hunger for? Will you stop at blackmail, or will you go on to violence and worse? Get out of this car, you pinky-faced crump. Get out! Get out of here, Rebby. Don't start anything now. I'll teach you to keep your hands off the mic. Cut it out, sir! Oh, my hands, you, sir! Girls in the night and their slumbred boyfriends daring anything, even murder. <laughs> Chuck killed him? Is that what you're saying? I don't get paid for thinking. I try to follow tips and evidence. Let go, my lady. Marry me and I'll take you away. I will. What have you done? Ten dollars? I'll get the money and I'll take you out of here. I promise. I love you, Hannah. Take another step. You're going to have to swallow the shiv. Don't, Chuck. Let him go. Here are you, pal. Are you kidding? I'll kill him. Those I don't kill, I'll cripple. Hey, Sam, you got the loop for the winner? Sam, you're looking younger every day. All right, fly to 
a single. Thanks a lot. You know I'd be on my way down to the theater. You were hit by a truck. I was hit by a truck. <laughs> Turn in your head, kid, you're through. Now, seriously, folks, management asked me to come out here and tell you that the title of the picture you all just enjoyed so much was Turn Out the Pilot Light, Mother. I'm riding the range tonight. <laughs> All right, kid, your cage is clean. Go on, get back in it. Now, listen, give this boy. He didn't mean anything. See, his folks are in the iron and steel business. Mother irons. It's father steel. Hi, <laughs> right, sir. Harpoon, right over here. <laughs> now, we're all here this afternoon to decide who's the most beautiful da bro young lady on the avenue. Now, you are the... It's all up to you, folks. Let me know with your applause. All right, here we go. Our first contestant, by the Davis's delicatessen. Here she is. Let's bring her out a big hand. Miss Rose Lambert. Music. Music. Alex. Alex Trisha. Turn on the music. Here she is, Rosie Lambert. Let's hear her. Bring her out. Thank you very much, Rosie. Walk right over there. And then back to me. Oh, God. Right. Let's hear it. Let's knock it up a little bit. All right, Rosie. Our next contestant. Miss Helen Hyde, brought to you by that sterling citizen, Paul Potts of Paul's yeah. Pant Shop. We match any coat. And here she is, Helen Hyde. Let's hear it for Helen. Right out here, honey. There you go. Yes, sir. By the Spick and Span Cleaners and Laundry, we air your dirty linen and <laughs> Holy Russo, get a load of this, folks. Come right over here. <laughs> All right. You can get right back on the line, honey, right over there. Uh, here we go, our next contestant, ladies and gentlemen. Sponsored by your friend and mine, Harry Side of the East Side Loan Company. Your friend when all others forsake you, and I mean your friend. Seriously, folks, this guy is such a doll. Don't miss a payment because the head comes off, the veins he opens up, and here she is, Angela Schultz. Let's hear it real good. Angela, right out here, Angela. Yes, sir, honey. Oh, wow, we. Angela, yes, sir, that's a dandy looking Oh, no, I don't believe. All right, right over here, honey. Keep your motor running. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contestant, Miss Hannah Haynes. To you Listen, now the walk the way I told you, you Next know. Place. Now go ahead. Rendezvous for the younger set. Here she is, Hannah Haynes. Let's hear it. Hannah Haynes. Wow. Hey, Hannah Haynes. 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 Hannah that's Angela Schultz. Helen Hahn, let's hear it for Helen. Very good. Rosie Lambert. Lily Russo. And last but not least. You're the winner. Unanimously chosen by you, you dandy little audience, you. Here she is, Miss Third Avenue. Hannah Hay, how about it? Folks, now, Mr. Sam Burns, proprietor of the Hub Clothing Store, Grand Corner of Christie, the Orange Town selling mink coats for $35 a piece. How can he do it, you ask? Very simple. Plain pipe racks, low overhead, out of the high-rent district, and he steals the coats. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Let's bring him out. A big hand. Here he is, Sam Burns. Ah, oh, boy, Sam right out here. Ladies and gentlemen, get a load of that. Is that beautiful? How about that? Sam, you're all right. Yes, sir, here's the rest of it, honey. How about that? Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Frankie. Hey, I'm going to meet Chuck. Okay, see you later. Bye, honey. Pretty sharp, Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Kovac. Hey, Hannah. How nice of you to come. You're fast to Bill. Slumming is such a bore, isn't it, Billy? Right. What are you looking at, sport? Ah, uh, 
You must be an awful rich kid wasting potatoes like that. Look, you're just supposed to peel off the skins. I'm never going to be a potato peeler. You know that, Ma. It's just as easy to do it right. That you, Hannah? Yeah, sorry I'm late, Ma. Brother, get a load of Hannah! What have you been doing? Where'd you get those clothes? Knock out, huh, Ma? Nothing but the best for me. Feel them real soft and nice, aren't they? Where'd you get them? Where'd you get that dress and that hat? And don't you lie to me, young lady. Underwear and stockings, too, Ma. The works. Real deluxe. Where'd you get them? Sam Burns gave them to me. Sam Burns? And what did you give Sam Burns? Don't think for a minute I believe one word you're telling me. Well, maybe if you tell me I look nice, I'll tell you where I got the clothes. I want to know how you got them. And I don't want any lies, see? There she is, dig her. Da -da 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 I give you my sister, Miss Third Avenue. I'm Miss Third Avenue, Ma. Won it, fair and square. So you won a beauty contest. That's how you got that outfit. Why didn't you say so? Because you worry about me like I'm ten years old. And you were thinking horrible things about me. You are beautiful, baby. I'm real proud of you. I wouldn't do anything wrong, Ma. I wish you'd understand that. What's the matter with her? What a spook. Maybe she's sick. Come on, kids. Come on, get out of here, will you? All of you. You too, Hilton. Come on, out. Sorry, baby. You know I didn't mean anything. What's the matter? Trip back to Earth too fast for you? Oh, it's not funny. It's kind of awful coming down off that cloud, Ma. Clouds are made to dream on, baby, not to live on. I love you, Ma, but I hate this place. I hate it so much it makes me sick. You win a contest and already you're too good for your home. Anybody's too good for this place. I have to get out of it. There was a photographer there from the newspaper. He said I could be a model or even in pictures. Help me. Listen, baby. Men don't help girls for nothing. Now, you just wait. Wait, wait. That's all I've done all my life is wait. I wasn't going to have to go to high school in this filthy slum. Oh, we've been getting out of here since I was a little kid. Honey. I haven't got a chance, Mom. Not as long as I live in this dump. I want to be somebody, not just a workhorse. Like me? Oh, no, Ma. You're an angel. I don't know what makes me such a problem child. I wouldn't say or do anything to hurt you or pop for anything. I guess I'm just all mixed up. Oh, no, baby. <laughs> You're not mixed up. You're right. This is no place for you or for Chuck or Hilda. You're Pop, and I know that. He telephoned me at the cafe today. He's got some good news for you. Good news? Uh-huh. He'll tell you himself when he gets home. I don't want to spoil it for him. Oh, baby, don't you worry. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. So this morning I go to work. Just another day beating a horse out of a job. And then right after lunch, the old man comes up to me. McGinty, the big boys. He comes. Hey, Danny, fill him up again. Coming up, Charlie. So as I was saying, the old man came up to me. I was stowing cargo like a mule. He come. I couldn't deny it, could I? Oh, of course not. Hey! Hey, a drink of the best for blind Minosa, the old fake. You be sure it's the best now, Danny, and not that cooking whiskey he always drinks, huh? I'll find my own drinks. My own brand. I don't want any favors from any of you. You mean you won't have a glass with me, you miserly old coots? <laughs> Just strange things to a man, being blind all day and being able to see a dime a half a mile away at night. <laughs> Makes him impolite. Why, well, I ought to take that drink. What are you going to do? He's an old man. What did the big boss say, huh? Consider the sword, huh? <laughs> What did he say? Well, he said to me, now listen, I'm quoting the big boys, mind you. He said, Charlie, he says, 
Charlie, starting Monday, you're the hiring boss on this job. The hiring boss? I'm a wheel. You'll make a good one, Charlie. <laughs> Alice knows about it, too? Yeah, yeah, Alice knows. <laughs> I called her down at that flea bag where she's hashing it. I told her, kids don't know about it yet. I'm going to wait till tonight till they fill their little bellies, and then I'm going to make the announcement. I'm going to tell them we're moving over to Astoria, over on Long Island. Oh, Alice had a heart set on getting over there ever since the kids started growing up. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? You got to move, huh? You get one little break, and you're too good for the neighborhood. Is that it? So that's it. That's what's right. Now listen. Listen, my old man was born on the east side, and so was I. Not three blocks away. I like it. It's for me. But you're moving away, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I got a wife and I got three kids. They want to move. This is no place to raise kids. So who are my girls going to marry? Jerks like us? I'm going to give those kids a break. You guys don't like it. You know what you can do. Hiya, Charlie. How's tricks? I have the way. Somebody call an ambulance. Don't try to move around. Call back San Bruno for an ambulance. Find time for this. It's supposed to start Monday. Fine guy to lock horns with the truck. Yeah, don't worry. Can't move my leg, Danny. Can't move it at all. Take it easy. You'll be okay. Well, what did the doctor say? I've been goofing off in this bed here for two weeks. Now, how much longer do I have to stay here wrapped up like a, a cocoon? Only a few more weeks. What are you kicking about? You never had it so good. Being waited on hand and foot, especially foot. Give me Pop's plate, Hilda. I'll fill it again. Not enough. You come home late for supper. You have to knock the door off its hinges. What are you in such a grand humor about? Can't you even let me eat in peace? You answer your mother and knock off that tongue of voice. For the love of Pete, let's don't have a brawl. I'm hungry. Be quiet, Hilda. Are you going to answer me? I just quit my job. Got in a beef with old man Gordon and I quit. Well, what do I want with a job learning to be a lousy suit press? So you quit? You know how much we need that money you've been bringing in here, but you quit. Oh, why don't you leave him alone? What do you want me to do? Take all that lip from Gordon and work like a horse in that sweatshop for $30 a week? So I get to be the best presser in the world. What am I? A presser. Where's that going to get me? Maybe you want to be a judge or the president of a bank or something. Maybe I do, but I ain't never going to be, because I got to work learning to be a presser. You can't even hold down a job learning to be a presser. You're never going to be anything but a hoodlum. All you want to do is hang around the corner down there with that bunch of tough kids. All right, I'll get a job racking balls in a happy time pool room. You're not going to work in any pool room. There's no kid of mine who's going to be a loafer. If you can't hang on to a job when we need you, then we don't need you. Who do you think you are? You can pick and choose jobs. You have to yell at me all the time. Well, are you going to go to work tomorrow? What are we going to do for that money you've been bringing in here? Don't you care? Are you so good for nothing you don't even think about your family? If all you care about is the money I bring in, I'll send it to you. You got a few insulting remarks for me? You want some? I'll never miss them. What do you want? I just think you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I ought to be ashamed of myself? I didn't start this beef. Ma's crying. She didn't mean any of the things she said. She works awful hard, Chuck, and she just wants you to do good, that's all. Well, what did she yell at me for? What is she always yelling at me like I'm ten years old or something? She's tired. And it's hot. Everybody's in a bad humor. You know, a week from tomorrow is a birthday. Yeah. Why don't you go back and say something nice? You know, Ma, she's eating her heart out up there. Yeah, Ma's a real doll, I know that. It's just that when she comes at me, I... I don't know, I get mad and I say things I don't mean. I know. 
Come on, let's go see what she wants for her birthday. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm awful sorry. I'm sorry, too, Chuck. Don't you worry about me, honey. I'll get another job tomorrow. I already got a line into the printing boss at the Color Plate Printing Company. He's a pal of Kovacs the Cotton. Kovacs is sending me in. I shouldn't have screamed at you. I'm just tired, I guess. That darn restaurant's beginning to get my ghost. I'm gonna learn to be a printer, Ma, just for you. Uh, That's a good trade. Printers make good money, they got a fine union. They take care of their own. Printing's a much better young guy. Come on, Priya. I learned that in school. That'll be all, Squirt. Maybe your pressing ain't so help, huh? Ah. <laughs> all right. Now I want some information. Now we want some information. You too? I thought you both knew everything. Almost everything, Ma. But we don't know what you want for your birthday. Say, hey, maybe you'd like a pair of roller skates to get past the service to those chow hounds at the restaurant. Or a limousine to go to work in. <laughs> oh, no. No, I don't want a limousine, kids. <laughs> those garages are too expensive. I, I think... I think I'd like a black silk negligee to wear while I'm lounging around the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something with a lot of ruffles on it, and maybe a little fringe on the pocket. Big sleeves, of course. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Everybody's got one. I saw one in a window once on Fifth Avenue. Only $90, I think it was. That's just what you need, honey. Why didn't I think of it? <laughs> well, now that we know what she wants, let's get out of here. Hey, listen, you kids. Don't stay out too late, you kids. You know, nights were meant for sleep. Here we go again. I'm gonna go upstairs and get George. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, sis. Come here. Joe's been missing you. He has? How touching. I can't even remember what he looks like. Hey, Joe's my best friend and he's a good guy. You treat him like a cousin. What's the gimmick? Joe thinks he owns me. He orders me around like I'm a slave or something. He's not so much fun anyway. Irv Keller is a lot better dancer. You stay away from Irv Keller. I don't want my sister around. Now, you gonna start telling me what to do? I'll go with Irv if I want to. Look, honey, Irv's a hood. He's done time in Elmira. He carries a rod, a 32, not a homemade one like I got. And he's gonna end up right back in that stony lonesome. And if he don't let you alone, I'm gonna kick his teeth in. Remember that. Why don't you mind your own business? I got a half a buck says I beat you. That's chicken feed. How about making it a couple of bucks? See you later. Come on, I'll take you out, though. Hey, Hannah. You know, you sure got a talent for being followed, Angel. And there's nobody I'd rather follow down the street than you. Not tonight. Got other things to do tonight. Flawless. Why are you playing so hard to get? What's the matter? Don't you want to have any fun, baby? Well, you What's little... the matter, honey? This wise guy giving you trouble? Not too much. He's just a little eager. Come on, let's get out of here. Where are you going with my girl, stupid? I'm not your girl, and I never was. Get lost. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the square with you. And I'm getting sick of talking. Stop it, Joe! Stop it! Nobody knows has a knife. Where's the knife? 
Look, you've been up once for cutting a guy up. You must have liked it. Where's the knife? What do I need a shiv to handle a creep like that for? Oh, look, you two hoodlums. If you want to fight, why don't you go join the police athletic league? They're looking for fighters. If I catch you fighting again on my beat, I'll lock you up and throw the key away. Now get in that car of yours and get off the street. All right, come on, break it up. Show's over. Come on, let's go. Move. Let's go. Are you all right, Joe? Yeah, I'm okay. Come on. Well, let's go up to my house and get that thing fixed. I'm okay. Forget it. Hey, what happened? Did you get in a beef? Herb tried to get fresh with me. I told you to stay away from that hood. If I got my hands oh, on him, Oh, come I'll... on. Let's forget about him. Why don't we go down to Nixon and play the jukebox? How about it? You and Chuck, go ahead. I want to talk to Hannah alone. Okay? All right, I guess so. Go see you at the sorority party. I don't care who you go around with. It's none of my business anyhow. That's right. But I should think you could use a little taste about it. Chase around that red hotter of an ex-con. You're a Harvard boy? No, I'm not a Harvard boy. I'm a gutter snipe just like you. I don't care who you go around with. I don't care so much I've almost lost my mind. I don't care so much I'm hanging around in front of your joint looking in your window. I don't care so much I'm writing poetry to you. You have, Joe? Let me see it. I tore it up. What difference does it make anyway? Let me see the poem you wrote, Joe. It's nothing. Just something inside of me that had to come out. You couldn't read it. It's scribbled. Then you read it to me. What am I, an owl? Come over by the light. Come on. Down. They say there's laughter in the street. That smiling people still are wed. Poor fools. They're very indiscreet. Or else they don't know love is dead. Love has died a hard death. Strangled by a pack of lies. Pennies pressed upon his eyes. Reason's hands have choked his breath. Love is dead. Cold reason rules and God help me if I'm a fool. For reasonable or not, it's true. For I'm in love. My love with you. Can you write that just for me, Joe? You see what it means, love is dead? You killed it. You had a hundred reasons why you and I should never marry. Reasons. Love isn't reasonable. They're two different things, love and reason. If you're going to be reasonable, you can't be in love. Simple as that, see? I didn't mean to hurt you, Joe, but... But you won't marry me. I can't. I won't marry anybody that lives in a rat trap like this. You're a man. You can't understand how I hate it. But, Hannah, listen to me. Look at those poor slobs down there in the stoop. They stood up here once, just like we're standing. And they had big dreams. They were going to get married and get out of here. Big, strong, healthy kids. Live in the sunshine and houses. And have happiness. But, Hannah, we're different. Everybody in this neighborhood thinks he's different. Until he's 30. And by that time, he's convinced that this is the only way to live. If I marry you, Joey, I'm springing my own trap and using myself for bait. And as much as I love you, I'm not going to do it. Do you think I like it here? Do you? Working all day in an auto laundry, knee deep in water for peanuts? I'm not learning anything. Do you think I want to stay here in this junk pile? Believe me, I haven't got the insides for this neighborhood. Who has? When Irv came at me with that shiv, I was scared to death. You carry a knife, I've seen it. Sure I carry a knife, and I carry a homemade zip gun once in a while, too. The only trouble is I haven't got the guts to use it. I'm a phony, I'm scared all the time. Sure. We live in a scared neighborhood. Everybody's scared. Scared of their bosses, the landlord, being sick. I'm tired of being scared, Joe. I've got to get out of here. Marry me, Anna. Marry me and I'll take you away. I will. What have you got? Ten dollars? I'll get the money and I'll take you away. 
I promise. I love you, Hannah. I've got to go down to the sorority, Joe. I'm late now. Why don't you drop by later? I'll get the money. I'll take you out of here. be seen in public with you. Here you are, doll. Tonight's the night? Tonight I dance for my public, my big specialty. I got my costume, I'm set. Let's get the show on the road. Here, I'll go change. You and Joe turn off the music. I'll make the announcement. Cats and all you dolls, I got an announcement of special interest to the cats and of highly educational value for the doll. Miss Georgia Cordray, the East Side's answer to the ballot ruse. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Has finally consented, after weeks of public request, to do her wild and undulating dance for this distinguished audience. <laughs> quiet, 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 please. All cash donations may be thrown on the floor during the dance. Now, the wildness and the uh, undulating will be regulated only by the amount of coins heard hitting the floor. <laughs> All right, children, I want a nice, solid beat right down the middle. None of this businessman stuff. All right, Jack, you take it from me. One, two. Ah! Here we go, let me hear it, let me hear it. Excellent.
I'm a playgirl. Georgia, the wine buyer. There must be 15 bucks there, 12 anyway. Hey, pretty easy way of making dough. Want me to help you count? Later, keep your hands above the table. <laughs> Joke's over. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Blind Mendoza counting more like this a coin at a time. Money, 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 money. Hello, Vera. How much you give? Plenty. Great way to make money. What are you going to give your recital, ugly? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much Luke Limonosa has to count every day when he gets home. You mean every night? He's changed hours. I heard him telling Danny down at the bar. <laughs> Seems poor old Limonosa can't stand the heat. He's working the nightclub belt now. Hey, that's another dollar. That makes nine. My old man says Limonosa must have seven, eight grand stash in that creep joint he lives in. Man, what I could do with a little of that. Just a thousand. You could buy Mom that black negligee. Half a dozen of them. What's the good of that money to blind Minosa? What rights that creep got with all that loot when my mom's eating her heart out for a black negligee? I know where it's hid. I was watching through the window one night when blind Minosa was putting it away. Shut up, Joe. And you too, Chuck. Just because we're broke, we're not going to be thieves. How did blind Minosa get the loot? Honestly? It's none of your business. If I hear you talking about robbing that check once more, I'm going to tell Mom. Or maybe Kovacs. You flip your own brother to the cops? I would to keep him from being a thief. Let's talk about something else. Ah, you know I was just kidding. Says, man, you blow your top so easy. How about another round, Georgia? You spring for the soda, I got the mix. All right. Joe, it's your time to get the champagne. Give me the dough. Come on. What are you and Joe going to do later on? Joe has to go see his sister, and then I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to the Tigers Clubhouse, huh, Chucker? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Excuse me a minute. Where did you see Blind Minosa hide that money? You're going to get it? What you don't know won't hurt you. Where did he hide it? It's under a loose board right next to the stove. There's a rag rug over it. Thanks. Don't say anything to Hannah, right? I got something to tell you. Sure. I'll be back in a minute, Shorty. Go on, drive away. I want to talk. I owe you one, ugly. You think fast with your head. Caught me with that shiv, I'd have had to take another trip. Give me the knife, huh? I ought to give it back to you up to the hilt, walking me off at that dame. You want to get out, ugly? You know where she is right now? She's holding hands and smooching with Joe in Nick's place. She was just using you to make Joe jealous, you chump. You want to get out or you want me to throw you out? No. I want to go for a ride. Oh, don't be mean to me, Ernie. I'll do anything if you won't be mean to me, you know that. No more cracks about Hannah, huh? No. Come on. Drive the car. Mm. And I'll tell you, with it's a soft touch, it'll get us out of here. Give me the ship. Now, what's the soft touch you're talking about? Blind Minoza. The fake blind man. That's a new gimmick, huh? Now, wait a minute. Listen. He's working nights now. Down around near the nightclubs. He got thousands of dollars in cash hidden in that flea bag he lives in. Now, we got all night to find it in. Let's drive around by there, huh? Give me the flashlight and the glove compartment. We'll take that loot and get out of here together, won't we? Sure. Sure we will. Let's get the loot first, huh?
Shouldn't take long to shake this rat trap down, huh? Get out of here. What do you want to do? Plead guilty? Give me the gun. I'll take care of it. You go back the way we came. I'll go through the alleys. Go back to the pool hole as fast as you can. We've been fighting that's your alibi. And don't act scared. Don't run. You hear? Yeah, very sure. Go on. Chuck, I gotta go see my sis. She's staying at mom's house with the new baby. Maybe we'll see you later. Hey, we gotta get going. Hey, tell the kid hello for me. Okay, so long. You know where we're going? To the Tigers. Nope. We're going to Bly Minosa's shot. We gonna rob it? Why not? You with me or against me? I'm with you every time, Chuck. But well, let's get going then. We're gonna put that money in circulation. Right now. some light, will you? Bring the match down here. The main event, kid. We got it. Good, let's get out of here. the world go round. I love it. This ain't no seven or eight grand. It's money, ain't it? Here's another hundred. You know, that's the first new hatch kid I've ever seen. Ugly? <laughs> oh, you idiot. All newborn babies look like that. Well, look who's here. What are you kids doing here? You're supposed to be over at the Tigers. Where did you get the money, Chuck? You know what Curiosity did to the kitten? You robbed Bly Minosa. I took it from a thief. You'll be in the pen just as long for stealing from him as you would from robbing a church. Oh, you fool, you stupid fool. This money's gonna talk. It's gonna tell people where it came from. 
That kind of money never did anybody any good. You'll get caught. The cops will get you. Who's going to tell the cops? You? Take it back, Chuck. Please take it back. Take it back? What, am I crazy? Don't you want your share of it? No, and neither does Joe. Are you kidding? What's the matter with Joe? Can't he talk? Well, it would get us out of here, baby. If you ever want to marry me, Joe, you won't touch a dime of that money. Okay, Chuck. I'll tag along with Hannah. Seven or eight grand was supposed to be here. You know what's here? 616 bucks and a couple of cents change. That's chopped liver. Chuck, take it back. If you've got any sense, you'll take it back. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stash this loot in a nice, safe place until the heat's off. Then George and me's going to have a ball. Sure is nice of Hannah and Joe to give us their share, ain't it, baby? Yeah. What is it? What's all the excitement about? Police car. Here comes another one. I wonder what's going on. Everybody's running up the alley there between those warehouses. Well, I can't let a little excitement make me late for the beanery. <laughs> Hannah, try and get Chuck up sometime before noon if you can. He's supposed to say about their printer's job or whatever it is today. Hey, I just heard down the hall that somebody killed him. What are you talking about? Somebody shot him last night and killed him dead. Who? Blind Minosa. What's the matter, baby? Well, you're shaking like a leaf. What's the matter? I don't know, Ma. Murder? It, it's just that I've never known anyone that was murdered before, that's all. I'm all right. Well, don't let that upset you, honey. <laughs> you better clean up this mess. Murder or no murder, I gotta go to work. I'll see y'all tonight. Yeah. Sorry about your eggs, Pop. I'll make you some more. So you better go wake up Chuck. And don't let him talk you out of it. Chuck! Chuck! Chuck, wake up! What do you want? Get out of here. Chuck, I've got to tell you something. What's all the excitement about? The house on fire or something? Blind Minos is dead. Somebody shot him last night. You didn't kill him, did you, Chuck? Kill him? I didn't even see him. He wasn't there. I knew you didn't. But somebody did. He's dead. How did you find out about it? We heard the excitement and Hilda ran down to see what it was about. You go upstairs and get Georgia right now. We better tell her before somebody else does. Sis? I didn't do it. You're the man for the job, Charlie, and I'm not being sentimental about it. Now, you won't be able to work like a mule for a while, so I'm holding the job as hiring boss open until you can get back to work. You don't know how much that job means to me. So wait till I tell Alice she's gonna flip, she'll be so happy. <laughs> oh, McKinsey, you're too good for this world. Well, you just be careful crossing streets till I get back on the job, huh? And while you're telling Alice that, you could whisper this to The union's lawyer settled a case out of court. She <laughs> got barred, that we had to admit. So the best we could do was a settlement for $2,750. $2,750 smackaroos? <laughs> but that's money from heaven. Say, that's a down payment on that little house in that story. Alice got a heart set on it, some furniture. Oh, this is a grand day, McGinty. Well, I'll sign it, and your check will be through in a few days. And believe me, Charlie, I'm happy about everything. What are you going to do? Shh. Hey, don't, don't, don't say a word about this to anyone until I get a chance to spring up blind Minosa last night. Yeah, I dropped by on my way up here. I listened in on a couple of cops talking. Seems Minosa was dead before he hit the floor. Yeah. The killer got all his miser's pile, huh? Yep. Good morning, Mr. McGinty. Oh, hello, Hannah, me darling. I always knew that money wouldn't do him any good. Well, it was about 10.30. Two shots from a 32. One of them right through the heart. He never knew what hit him. And to think somebody will have to go to the chair for killing that miserable old man. Yeah. I tell you, it wasn't worth it, no matter how much he got. Oh, thank you, Hannah. I better go give Chuck another shake. He'll never get up. <laughs> 
I wish I could sleep like that, kid. Oh. Gotta stick together, all four of us. We were never separated last night. Blind Minosa was killed last night about 10.30. He was there dead when you and Georgia went in. He wasn't. Believe me, he wasn't. If he'd have been there dead, I'd have seen him, or Georgia would. He wasn't there. He was shot and died in that lean-to he slept in, in the back. That door, that closed door in the back, remember? He was in there. Take it easy, baby. We didn't kill him. Where'd you get all this dope? McGinty's out in the parlor with Pop. He heard the cops talking. Track upstairs. Act like nothing happened. All right. Play real cool, will you, baby? You can count on me. Is the coast clear? Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna go see about the printing job. Hannah, you do just what you always do. Now, both of you meet me on a roof later this afternoon. I'll go by where Joe works and tell him about it. Sorry I got you into this, sis. I guess I should have listened to you. You gotta send that money back, Chuck. Back to who? Blind Minosa? Don't keep it, Chuck. It's not yours and it's bloody. All right, kid. Now, let's get out of here. I gotta get washed up. Be on your tail, I got grew there. What do you want me to do? Stick around here and let him frame me for that killing? Frame you? <laughs> you already got yourself convinced you didn't do it. Lay off. Get out of my hair, will you? No, Irving boy. I'm in your hair to stay. You got that alibi fixed up like I told you? Yeah, sure. You got into that beef with Joe. You went down at a happy time pool hall and you were there until I came and dragged you out. You got into your car with me. We had an argument. You drove me home. Then you went back to the happy times and played pool, right? Right. And Monk and five or six of the guys will swear I wasn't gone from the pool hall for maybe a few minutes. And I'll cover for them few minutes. You got it whipped. You stick with me? Yeah. What'd you do with the gun? They'll never find it. And as long as I know where it is and you don't, you're just about going to have to do everything I tell you to, Irving. Because the only thing that's keeping you from the hot seat is me, darling. There's 20 matches apiece. They're nickels. Hey, as long as we're playing for matches, why don't we call them dollars? It doesn't cost any more. It'd be just my luck to win a hundred dollars <laughs> worth of matches. We ain't up here to kid. We're up here to plan a story. Let's get it right, understand? All right, it goes like this. After we left next place, we walked up Henry Street to the corner of Clinton. The corner of Henry and Clinton, we stopped. Had an argument. That's sure the truth. Now get this straight. You and Joe... I open for a dime. I'll stay. How about you, Anna? I'm in. Okay, everybody plays. Let's go. You pinching people for playing poker for matches now, Kovacs? Surprised to see you characters playing for matches after all that loot you picked up last night. I thought you'd be opening for ten dollar bills. Give me a puff on that. I'd like to dream too. What's he talking about, Kovacs? Look, kids, this is Lieutenant Myers from Homicide. He's working on the blind Minosa killer. <laughs> What's that got to do with us? We supposed to have killed him? It's a good bet we got evidence that says you did. What kind of evidence do you think you got? Even a cop has to tell you before he puts you in the chair, don't he? Sure. You know, I don't know what makes you little red hots down in this section think us cops get paid for trying to railroad you. We don't work on commission. We don't even know you're alive. Last night, the four of you were seen in a place known as Nick's place, right? Were you all there? I don't know what time was the murder. You can't trap us. What makes you such a wise guy? Just keep your lip buttoned until I get through talking, will you? You've seen counting a lot of money, mostly small coins, nickels, dimes, quarters, pennies, and a few halves. Just to kind of change, passerbys might drop into the cup of a blind man. <laughs> What's so funny? Any of you care to deny it? <laughs> Must be quite a comedian. What I say that's killing you? I might want to use it again. Well, we were counting money. A little over fifteen dollars worth in chicken feed. You wanna know where we got it? Well, I think I know, but I'd like to hear your idea. Just for laughs. Oh well, I needed some money. Always do. So I did a dance at the Lambert Tri Delta Sorority Clubhouse. Yeah? Yeah. And while I was dancing, swinging a little here and uh, swaying a little there, the gentleman in the audience threw coins on the floor. So I'd swing a little more here and sway a little more there. And when I'd swung and swayed a little over $15 worth, I stopped. Because I figured I'd milk the guys for just about all they had. 
there are at least 50 people who can tell you about it. Kovacs knows all of them. Does that answer your question, Lieutenant Myers? Okay, kids. I ask a question, I got an answer. It's too screwy not to be true. Come on, Kovacs. Sorry I wasted my time. You apes like thrills? There's a little evidence to point at you. Ah, you were seen counting a lot of money, mostly in small coins. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. That cop's on his toes. You're gonna see him again. Well, and he's off of it. Sure, probably the best thing that could have happened to you. Well, I'm worried anyway. Well, simmer down, you worried to... Look, we got more company. Now let's play poker. Okay, where were we? I opened. I'm staying. I'm in. Okay, everybody plays. Let's go. What was Kovacs in the kitchen? They thought they had. They different. Pass to the gamble. Two. Give me them, Chuck. Three. You kids don't think you'll get away with it, do you? What are you talking about? You killed Blymanoza. I saw you. You saw me? What do you want to lie like that for? You couldn't have seen us. I didn't do it. Save it for the cops. You and Georgia went into Blymanoza's shack. <laughs> You'd like to kill me, wouldn't you? I was looking through the window when you lifted that box out from under the board. I was watching, understand? You know what that means? Well, you big, beautiful people. It means that all I have to do is call them cops back and you go to the chair. <laughs> Poor little ugly Vera that you felt so sorry for. She's got you right over the barrel. <laughs> you beautiful big shot. We don't know anything about who killed him. You're crazy. Keep your hands off me, you big pig. Don't you ever try to hurt me? Because I'll blow the whistle on you so fast you'll wake up strapped to the chair. What do you want, dear? We don't know anything about that murder. You're wrong about that. You know about them lifting that box full of money, don't you? You ain't gonna be chumps in tonight, are you? Yeah, I'm gonna get mad. And you don't ever want to make me mad. Now, I'll tell you what I want. I want half the money. Half! I could ask for all of it, but I only want half. <laughs> How much do you think was there? There was plenty. Everybody knows that. Look, ugly. There was only... Shut up! Don't ever call me ugly. My name is Vera. Vera! You better remember that. All right. All right, Vera. If you were looking through the window when I lifted that box, you know I didn't kill Blind Manosa. I didn't even see him. We didn't even know he was there. We didn't. Honest, we didn't. And who is going to believe you? The cops? I tell them who lifted the loot, are they gonna look any further for a killer? You kidding? How much was there? The total was 616 bucks. That makes your cut 308. You think I'm gonna let you get away with that? Everybody knows how much loot Blymanos had stashed. Look! I don't shove around anymore, see? You ain't gonna pay me off with any stinking 300 bucks. I want a couple of grand and I want it now. You're crazy, Vera. Look, Vera, there was only 600 bucks there. We were all here when it was counted. You got 24 hours. Where am I going to get two grand? Maybe you can win it playing poker. Chuck, you know that Vera's off a rocker. She'd just as soon blow the whistle on you as not. What do you want me to do, write her out a check? Maybe you better beat it to the punch. Give Kovacs the money and tell him what happened. Sure. That's a great idea. Then all I gotta do is go to the chair and everybody's happy. Look, I didn't kill the guy. Let whoever did it plead guilty. Hey, wait a minute. It was about 10.30 when Bly Manos was killed, right? Right. It was about 10.30 when you and George went into the shack. They couldn't have missed the killer by more than a couple of minutes. And Vera was looking in the window when you lifted that box. She must have been there when Vera was committed. Vera knows who the real killer is. Sure she knows who it is, and she must be shaking him down, too. He was shot with a 32, was wasn't he? Twice with a 32. Irv Keller has got a 32. He carries it all the time. All right. If you idiots haven't got brains enough to take care of yourselves, I'll have to do it for you. Irv's been after me for a long time. Okay, now I'll give him his chance. Look, 
You stay out of this. Chuck and me will take care of him. Sure. You're going to beat a confession out of him. He's going to plead guilty to murder to get out of a black eye. Oh, you guys think with your muscles. Look, leave this to me. Herb will be around the Happy Times pool room tonight. And who's going to pick him up and pump him? Me. Now I got to go help with supper. Let her go. Anna can take care of herself. <laughs> now, you guys wouldn't like it in Elmira. No dames, too confining. And the bars in the window make stripes in your suntan. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know? Here comes poison. Hello, Earth. You got a lot of guts talking to me, babe. Where's that stupid boyfriend of yours? We had a fight. I'm all through with him. I'm sorry about what happened. You gentlemen will have to excuse me. I got to talk with this woman. You going to be hard to get along with? I don't like dames that give me trouble. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Come here. Don't order me around, Irv. I want to make up with you, but don't order me around. You know, you're a creep, Hannah. You build me up, and you let me down. Now you want another chance to build me up, huh? I won't let you down, Irv. What do I have to do, beg? Get in. This isn't the place for the kind of talk we're going to make. I want to whisper something. Oh, no. Get out of this car, you pasty-faced crumb. Get out! Get out of here, Ruggie. Don't start anything now. I'll teach you to keep your hands off of mine. Turn it out, Burr! Go my hand! Stay out of this, Herb! Get out Cut it out! Stay out of it, Ruff! Or I'll throw the whistle on you about last night. <laughs> Somebody grab Bella! Grab it! Grab it! Cut it out! Let's go to jail! Ah, kill us! No, you won't! Some of my hair's a couple of inches longer. Any marks showing? No. You're still as beautiful as ever. I had to bust that fight up. I didn't want you breaking into jail fighting with that idiot. I gotta go make the pass. Yeah. I gotta go straighten the Vera out. But I'll be around, waiting. Hannah! How about one on account? You think it's safe? Don't worry about Vera. How about it, huh? See you later. information I wanted. Irv killed Bly Minosa, and Vera's holding it over him. How do you know? She said she was going to blow the whistle on him. Just like she told us, blow the whistle. Remember? And he's scared to death of her. Okay, what's our next move? Let's go over to the sorority house and we can talk. You want to hear my side of it, or don't you? Let me go away. Look, I had to stop the fight. You can understand that, can't you? I wasn't having anything to do with that dame. She said she wanted to talk to me, and I thought she was hip to the blind thing. I had to find out. I don't want to talk to you. Look, you're my girl, aren't you? Haven't you always been? If I wanted to be with that Hannah dame, I'd be with her, wouldn't I? I'm with you. Look, I'm on your side. I pulled that crumb off you, didn't I? What's the matter? You got ants? Let's get out of here. Let me go home and change my clothes, and I'll meet you in the old warehouse in 15 minutes, okay? Sure. I'll be waiting for you. What are you so scared about? I'm not scared. Do you love me? Sure, I love you. Okay, then. Meet me. Yeah.
suppose that is. Oh, Charlie, if you still got that thing on. All right, well, you're still breaking down the door. Oh, Mr. Kovacs. Good evening, Mrs. Haynes. What do you want? Uh, this is Lieutenant Mars from Homicide. I'm looking for your son, Chuck. He's wanted at headquarters. Chuck? What about the police? Let me see your search warrant. You can't force your way into my house this time of night. I know my rights. I don't need a search warrant to pick up people for capital crimes, but I got one just in case I ran across a curbstone lawyer like you. And I want that kid. He was seen leaving Bly Minosa shack right after the killing. Break him out. Chuck's not home. Neither is Hannah. I'll take a look. You, you think Chuck killed him? Is that what you're saying? I don't get paid for thinking. I try to follow tips and evidence. Let go, me lady. Charlie. Charlie. Now, wait a minute. Charlie. Take it easy, honey. Take it easy. The detectives have to follow every lead, Mrs. Haynes. Mars is a good guy. Our Chuck didn't do it. He couldn't kill anybody. They'll find that out, honey. Now, don't worry. We know Chuck didn't do it. I'm sorry about this, Charlie. I tried to tell him Chuck's no killer, but well, they have to follow every lead. It's that job. Our boy wanted for murder. Oh, it's going to be trouble, Father. Please. Come on. Come on. with you, Midget. <laughs> what are you doing out in the street in that get -up? The police are at the house. They want you at headquarters. Hilda! Go on. You were seen leaving Brian Minosa's shack right after the murder. The man's a detective. He came after you. You gotta hide. Chuck, what are we gonna do? You'll have to hide until we find her and make him confess. Where are you gonna find him? You haven't got forever, you know. You and George just slip out the back way and go down to my brother-in-law's joint. He's at Mom's with a new baby. Here's the key. Hannah and I will find him. We know where he did it. Why don't we just tell the police? How are you gonna prove it? Come on, Georgia, let's get out of here. Come on, Momentum. Come on. If you find Earth, come and get me before you try anything, will you, Joe? Right. We gotta pin it on him now. We'll find him. Be careful, kids. Come on, we got work to do. Have you seen her? Well, not since just after the fight. And you were away ahead. Say, it was too bad they had to stop it, wasn't it? Where did he go? Well, uh, he was trying to make up with Vera. I just happened to hear him say that he'd, uh, he'd meet her in the old warehouse in 15 minutes. Uh, that was, well, about 10 minutes ago. Hey, there's Sharky's cab. Let's go. Take us to the old warehouse, quick. Oh, stay out, will you? This is no lover's retreat. What's the matter? Somebody else up on the roof? Cut out the jokes. This is important. We gotta pick up Chuck and Georgia. I thought you'd never get here. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Kiss me and let's get out of here. Sure. What's your hurry, baby? Do you want to kiss me? Don't I always? Oh, what's so different now? You're still as um, beautiful as ever. Don't make fun of me, Irv. 
But I don't care. I don't care about nothing as long as I got you. Is that right? You don't care about nothing, huh? No, not as long as we're together. I'm glad you said that, Vera. Because I got a surprise for you. A real big surprise. What is it? I love you. No matter what happens, always remember I love you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because I hate you. Because I'm going to kill you. No. Because you're as ugly as sin. Because you're the only one can finger me for the blind Minosa job. Reasons enough, baby. You don't want to kill me, Earth. I love you. I want to help you. You don't want to kill me. Oh, you're only kidding me. I don't want to spend the rest of my life knowing you can send me to the chair whenever you want to. I've always hated you. The only reason I ever went with you was because you were available. I got a new girl now, Hannah. A real dish. Yeah? Well, you ain't gonna have a long. We're gonna have nothing long. You'll go to the chair, you dirty double-crosser. I fixed that. Fixed what? What did you fix? Kill him, ain't gonna do you no good. Because I called the cops and I told them about you and Bly Minosa. I told them when the gun was buried and your fingerprints are on it. They're looking for you right now, big shot. You're gonna burn! Oh, That's Vera screaming. Come on! <laughs> After you're taking another step, you're going to have to swallow the shiv. Don't Jack, let him go.
Where's Keller? I don't know. He slugged me. You all right? I'm okay. Get him up. Take him to the car. before this court, a confessed thief. Yesterday, I sentenced Georgia Cordray to 90 days in the county workhouse for her part in this robbery, and suspended the sentence because of her past clean record. Frank Minoso was cold-bloodedly murdered for his money. Irving Kelleher, a boy your age, is dead. Vera Schroeder, another of our neighborhood children, is awaiting trial for manslaughter for her part in this crime. Your mother, Alice, and your father, Charles Sr., have appeared before me and told me that you're a good boy. You returned the money you stole. You risked your life to bring a murderer to his just reward. I'm inclined to be lenient with you, Charles. Less on your account than on the family. I sentenced you to one year in jail. What? On the recommendation of the probation authority and those who appeared in your behalf, is the judgment of this court... No! Chuck! Oh, oh, baby! <laughs> One scratch and I'll take it out of your hide. That table belonged to my grandmother. Yeah, she got it secondhand. You okay up there? Yeah. yeah. Sloppy a job of cargo storing as I haven't seen. Charlie! Yeah? We better hurry or the furniture will get to the story before we do. You children get your device said now. Oh, don't look at me like that, baby. I might move back in. How far is the story? You'll be over here in 30 minutes. And you better be. The way I feel about you isn't anything a little geography's gonna change. Kiss me, Jack. What's the matter with you, Chuck? Are your arms broken? Break it up, break it up. This isn't the end of the world. See you in Astoria, Charlie. All right, come on, kids, let's go. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
the lucky one. Goodbye. 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 See you. Well, Charlie will have me back for a visit. Good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Kovac. <laughs> Now, we'd like you to meet some of the youngsters of our cast. The part of Hannah Haynes was played by Patricia Hardy. The part of her brother, Chuck Haynes, was played by Harvey Lembeck. The role of Georgia Cordray was played by Joyce Holden. Joe was played by Glenn Roberts. The part of Irv Kelleher was played by Don Gordon, who really isn't, but a very nice guy. Played by Jacqueline Green.